Hey there, I'm Cheese. I know it's been a minute since I last uploaded, but hey, I'm back. And today we're going to do something a little different. Right here we have a crusty and dusty AMD 3 socketed machine with an EVGA RTX 650, 16 gigs of RAM, and it's in desperate need of a full refurb. I mean, just look at the poor thing. It's pretty beat up. This rig has been sat in my foyer for the past few months waiting for me to clean it up. This is actually one of my kiddos machines for Minecraft casual gaming that got turned into what I can only describe as a footrest and yeah it's older but it does the job just fine. Anyway, let's take a look inside. So we're going to start this dust duration off removing the two 6 pin connectors on the graphics card and unlatching the riser cable from the motherboard's PCIe connector. Obviously, cleaning your machine regularly can increase the lifespan of them dramatically, as well as improve performance by reducing the chance of thermal throttling, which this machine had been doing pretty regularly when it was last used. Then, we'll remove the cables and get the Wi-Fi card out. And finally onto the RAM. This machine is running 8 gigs of RAM in each slot in dual channel mode, but like I said, it's older, so it's DDR3. But let's see what we can do with it to make it look presentable and get that thermal throttling under control. So right here you can see me struggling with this hook and latch system for the CPU cooler, but I do get it figured out soon enough. I'm actually not a fan of this build at all. It's basically built out of spare parts I had laying around. I believe it's a Best Buy pre-built case with effectively no cable management options. It has the ketchup and mustard cables, really flimsy facades for the front base, and overall it's just not very fun to work on. Next, we're gonna move on to the main harness for this machine, pressing firmly on the latch and lifting up. This rig is super dusty. So let's get the rest of these cables out of the way, starting with the USB and then the top panel power button, reset and indicator LEDs. Next we're going to get the whole motherboard out so it can be thoroughly cleaned. So let's get all these screws out of the way and as you can see that top left corner I was struggling to get the screw out and that's because it did that thing where the standoff unscrewed and the screw didn't. but it's not a big deal, I'm just going to jam my hand behind the motherboard and try to hold that standoff still while I unscrew the screw, and then we can screw the standoff back in. Take a look how grimy this thing is. So now you can see me using a little nylon brush to clean up the heat sink. I really like this brush because unlike a toothbrush or a denture brush, it's completely straight and I can get into cracks and crevices with it that you can't get into with other brush heads. Oof, look at that money shot. I think this brush actually came with a set of clippers, like hair cutting clippers. This is usually the grimiest part of any refurb, but it's also the most important, because getting the dust out of your heatsink and cooler can massively improve performance and efficiency. You're going to see me spend a few minutes here with various tools and methods of getting big chunks of debris out of the fan. But honestly, if you have pets, this can build up super fast.
Next, I'm going to break out the vacuum cleaner and get the case and graphics card cleaned of surface dust. I also have a nylon head for my vacuum cleaner, which makes short work of the bigger areas of cleaning. And then you can see me come back in with the small brush to clean out the fins on the graphics card as well as the PCB on the Wi-Fi card. You'll also notice I clean out the ports of the graphics card here as well. This step is also really important because if you leave the inside of the case dirty, it'll just block your fans up again in no time and you'll have to do it again anyway. So do it right, do it once. Okay, so let's move on to cleaning the mating surfaces for the heatsink and CPU. I'm going to completely strip and clean these surfaces. As you can see, I'm using a cloth and a toothbrush for this, as well as some 91% isopropyl alcohol, which helps break down any old thermal paste that's baked on there from being overheated. Ooh, shiny. Next, we're going to apply some fresh thermal paste and use a spreader to get a nice, thin, even distribution across the CPU. and make sure we don't have any dry spots. Once the CPU is back in place, we're going to clean all the slots and ports on the motherboard with a little 91% isopropyl alcohol and set that to one side to evaporate. While that does its thing, we're going to go over the case again with the vacuum and then start reassembling. And yes, I did clean out the power supply, but I didn't get a good shot of it, so I'm not going to include that garbage in the video. I honestly tried to do some cable management on this and I ended up with some zip ties to tidy up the mustard and ketchup wires the best I could, but in the end I just ended up stuffing it all back in the front bay so they're out of eyesight. Once everything is back in and the wires are back in place for the top panel, I'm going to try and fix the GPU sag. I did notice that the facade for the GPU is actually not attached, so I fixed that, and then I believe I used a small piece of plastic to prop the GPU up off of the exhaust from the power supply. Finally, let's get this case handled. I'm gonna start vacuuming any loose debris out of the top panel, and then I'm gonna come in with a toothbrush and scrub some more isopropyl alcohol in. So let's get scrubbing. I 
I should probably mention you can use isopropyl alcohol on most things, just don't use it on your screens for anything because it can destroy the coating and make your screen unusable. Alright, let's take a look at this super beat up side panel. As you can see it's really dirty and it has some super deep scratches, as well as some old stickers and residue from other stickers. I'm going to start by basically scrubbing the entire thing with isopropyl alcohol and soaking that sticker in it to break down the glue. Isopropyl alcohol is a solvent, but unlike water, which is also a solvent, it's not very corrosive and it evaporates very quickly. 91% isopropyl alcohol is probably about the best that you can get for non-commercial lab use and it's more than enough for what we're using it for. I believe if you want to get higher than 91% isopropyl alcohol, you have to use drier agents, and then it's considered anhydrous. I don't know, I'm not a chemist. I wasn't sure what I was going to do about the side panel. It's got some super deep scratches and oxidation, and I remembered I had some headlight restoration products from fixing an old van, so I figured I'd give those a try. Honestly, I think it did a fantastic job. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm thinking about doing my editing rig next, so subscribe for that, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.